All right, guys, so uh, I did my walk around video on the Montero and kind of rushed through it because I wanted to get to this. This is the project I've been working on for quite some time, I've been having some fun with it, um, and uh, wanted to kind of get into this, but didn't want to leave people hanging that wanted to see more on the Montero. So without further ado, this is the Rack Shack. All right, so the Rack Shack started as a 98 Cherokee. All right, um, 220 some thousand miles on it, pretty much rust free, got it from a friend, um, didn't have axles, didn't have transmission, didn't have transfer case, it was sitting on a trailer and uh, he wanted it gone so uh, I gave him a couple hundred bucks for it, took the body home and uh, over some time turned it into this. So you can imagine it started as a full four door with everything. Um, and the reason it's called the Rack Shack is because when I brought it home, my wife said it looked like a family of raccoons had lived in it. Um, that was probably a stretch. It didn't look that bad, but I can understand. I mean, you bring home a new project vehicle and uh, I can understand, understand why she would say something like that. So um, essentially the idea behind this project was to build a quote unquote low buck crawler something you can take on, out on the trail and have a good time with uh, that'll be capable but isn't going to be a uh, full buggy okay so this is what i ended up with um so chopped the back of this thing off built some frame rails all right so tied in some two by four frame rails into the unibody and then into some framework i built here at the firewall area okay and then uh the the really the real strength comes from this this exo cage uh, that my friend Rob built for me. So uh, all the triangulation and all the support obviously keeps this thing from just tacoing because we all know a Cherokee is based on a unibody. It's a unibody vehicle, all right? So uh, in the rear, I, I kept leaf springs. These are F-150 leaf springs that have been flipped. And then there is a, uh, like a traction bar underneath to keep things from wrapping up, okay? Um, sorry, this, there we go. So F-150 leaf springs flipped with uh, like a flexi shackle I kind of built back here. You can see it's got a ball in it. So leaf springs in the rear, steel coil springs in the front. Uh, the front is using JK control arms. These are rock crawler control arms, uh, rock crawler brand, the high clearance ones. And uh, I didn't want to go full long arm because Long arm, to me, is expensive. It's, it's a, there's a lot more involved with trying to make it all fit underneath this thing. And so I went with the JK stuff. It's uh, easily replaceable. There's not much custom about it. Um, it was easy to make happen. And that idea came from Greg Henderson, who has done the JK suspension geometry and modified it and made it work on quite a, quite a number of vehicles. And um, I really look up to Greg for that. So that idea came straight out of his playbook. Um, it's using metal cloak springs in the front. I believe they're three and a half inch springs, but obviously there's a spacer also because it just didn't really work with the three and a half inch spring. Um, the axles are Dodge Dana 60 front and rear. The front is a CAD Dana 60. They're out of a 98 2500. They are the axles everyone tells you not to use because they're weak, right? I think the rear is 30 spline. It's not even a true one ton axle. The front obviously has that CAD disconnect, so people really say, hey, don't use it. My opinion so far after a season of wheeling on this thing is um, if you're gonna run a sticky, and you're going on a 40 or something like that, then yeah, they're not gonna really hold up. Or if you have gobs of horsepower. I have a over 200,000 mile four liter. It doesn't have that much power, and I, I'm not that heavy footed in this thing, so they've been holding up. I did get stuck in a, jammed in a rock, and I did break one rear axle shaft. Oh well, who cares? Um, as far as locking differentials, they're both welded, front and rear welded. And then uh, I essentially did that because I wanted to be able to deselect the CAD and have a, a free axle. Unfortunately, that just didn't really work out, so it's permanently locked together. It doesn't have the one-piece shaft that some guys use, but uh, it's working okay. This thing doesn't see any time on the street, so I don't really care if it's a pain to drive. Um, that being said, steering, I made my own steering. Most of these parts came from barns, um, and then it's got uh, home-brewed hydro assist into a Durango box 
tapped Durango box. Works really well. Um, I really thought I'd be able to go further without hydro assist, but what a fool I was because hydro assist is where it's at. Up front, it's got a worn, I think it's a 9500i. Got this thing off Facebook Marketplace, threw a synthetic line on it, it's been fine. Um, let me see here, did the, did the half doors obviously. These have not seen any trail time yet, but half doors, um, interior, eBay steering wheel. This is, I think, a Mazda seat. That's still the stock XJ seat. I need to put the other one in. Um, and then you see this crazy shifter. So this thing, I made it an NP435 transmission to this out of like a late 70s Ford. I wanted this, I wanted that transmission specifically because I wanted that granny, granny low first gear to just be able to crawl up stuff. Um, I bought that thing with a transfer case for like $200, okay? Came with a uh, 205. I didn't end up using the 205. I ended up putting an uh, NV273 out of a Super Duty in, under this. That trans, uh, transfer case is absolutely gargantuan. It is massive, all right? You see how much it hangs down. It is just an absolute monster. But I did that because it was the junkyard way of doing it. It was a direct bolt up to the transmission and it went from a essentially 2.0 low to a 2.72 to one low. So I now I have a 6.6 .6 something first gear to a 2.72 uh, low, and then four tens, which are the stock stock gears in the axles, and it gets me like 75 to one or somewhere around there, which is great. I'm completely content with that. Um, I don't really need to go much lower. Maybe if I go to a taller tire in the future, but for now that works out totally well. Um, the only problem, like I just showed you, is that that transfer case is so huge, it just hangs down, and you just smash everything. Um, and because the Cherokee's a unibody, it's obviously very difficult to have a flat belly when things hang down like that. I did cut into the floor, but I just couldn't get the clearance I wanted. Uh, out back, you'll see that I still used the XJ side glass. I just kind of flipped them over, and that's how I did the back. Um, this thing is not some like superb fabrication piece. I didn't really care how it was gonna finish out, um, but so far it works. Um, this section here is actually the second door on the Cherokee. There's still hinges and stuff in there. Like if this wasn't welded, that door could potentially open, you know, but I didn't really care about that. I just wanted a little bit more space. I kind of wanted an extended cab Comanche and that's, that's what I got. So I'm happy with that. Um, out back, Got a fuel tank here. It's like a 10 or 11 gallon spun aluminum fuel tank that my buddy Rob welded bungs on and a sump on the bottom. So that's nice. I run an external fuel pump and then it's a return style fuel system, uh, which the 98 Cherokee didn't have. It was returnless, but I was having problems. So I put on return style rail, ran it back. It's been no issue. Um, the other thing you'll notice as we walk around is that it's got different tires everywhere. And sticking with the idea of running a very very low budget build i essentially bought tires wherever i could they're 37 12 50 17s on some used hummer wheels i didn't care what brand of tire it's got a bfg a nitto here nitto in the other corner and then the good year and then like a falcon at for a spare it works it's it doesn't have sticky grip but it, it works when you have when you're trying to not spend any money okay uh, out back, like I said before, it's a Dana 60, three-quarter ton. I built some junky truss and uh, threw it all together. It's like, it, besides breaking that one axle shaft, it's been fine. I don't have any horsepower and I don't have sticky tires and they're not large, so it'll work. Um, this is something new I just put on. I haven't tested it off-road. I tested it on the ramp, but not off-road. These are two WJ... Um, sway bars off the rear and what i wanted was i wanted a little bit of uh, anti-roll control um but i didn't want it to be excessive so this gives me a little bit of control when the things should give me a little bit of control when the thing is uh you know off camber without the whole thing trying to flop over uh, i just wanted a little bit more and i realized with the leaf springs it probably doesn't need it back here but with the pivot it gives me a little more flex so i now have a reason to have them back here plus with everything going on up front, it's just a pain to try to fit a sway bar up front. Um, and for those that think, oh, you should've just got an anti-rock, that was $20. Two, two sway bars, 10 bucks a piece. 
I'm content with $20. Um, so besides the fuel tank, I got a cooler, obviously paint matched. Got an ammo can back here with some random stuff in it. Um, lights, those are rigid lights in the middle someone gave me. And then these outside ones are just some eBay specials. Um, like I said, I got a spare here. And then I have a toolbox here, which will have obviously tools in it. And then on this side, there'll be like, I think impact and some other stuff, but uh, made that so they're relatively easy to get out. They're not gonna bounce around. And then I have a spare axle shaft slid in here. Um, this 60 uses the same size axle shaft left and right. So I only need to keep one spare, knock on wood. Um, Dirt Logic shocks that were off of a truck I worked on, freebies, okay? Um, the front uses these Skyjacker long shocks. They're like, I don't know, 40 bucks a piece or something like that. Seem to be working really well. And then drive shafts it is using the 2500 Dodge drive shaft that these axles came out of and I was able to make it work so that it uses the same exact drive shaft front and rear So if I get to the point where I want to carry a spare It will be the same drive shaft front and rear, which is pretty awesome um, This cooler is for steering I plumbed in a steering cooler with a fan and it uses a WJ steering steering box with the bigger reservoir the one for the hydraulic fan so I uh, now I got a little bit more capacity a little bit more volume, bigger pump, it really helps out. And then um, for cooling on the engine, it's just using a stock clutch fan on this side and the electric fan on this side, and then I put a little pusher up front just for some support. Works out well. I have no real complaints with it. I did fight problems with overheating initially, um, but that has been resolved. Uh, knock on wood. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. And I wanted to kind of introduce this thing because we're going to be doing some wheeling soon and getting some videos of that so felt like I should probably show you what I have here um, like I said it, ha it does have a season on it and it's worked out really well um, and what I really really like about this thing is that when you have a trail rig it doesn't matter like if you're gonna trailer it everywhere it doesn't matter what the vehicle is and what it looks like because who cares like if you bust this thing up and break every part of it like it doesn't matter versus when you take something that you daily or drive to the trail like you have to be conscious of how you're going to get home and when you can drag this junk on a trailer like who cares what happens to it um, and i really like that really like that a lot every other vehicle i've put together like that has i've had to be conscious of you know what i'm going to use it for and and all that and so i really like just being able to beat on something and not care about it uh, interior i did some little cup holders and junk yeah, there's, a, there's a speaker that'll go back there Harbor Freight dome light, um, some switches. And those wires, even though they're red, they're not hot wires. Um, but yeah, that's the rack shack in a hole. As a you know, you know what I mean. So next video, hopefully, will be some wheeling. And uh, if you got any questions, drop it in the comments. Um, if you want to tell me it's a pile of crap, drop it in the comments. Oh, that's the other thing. I was able to slide a jack here between the two toolboxes because I don't like using high lifts. Uh, so I keep that and I keep the block of wood for the being able to jack this thing up if I need to. So yeah. Alrighty. Well, there's a rack shack. See ya.